Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about the dark empath. And okay, what is a dark empath? What does it mean to be a dark empath? Basically, dark empaths have been hyped up in popular culture lately as the kind of superheroes of the bad guys. So often the dark empath is a person that possesses a un unusually high EQ, a high ability to recognize and understand your emotions but also low agreeableness, low openness, and low conscientiousness. That means a dark empath is a person that tends to understand accurately how you are feeling and how you will respond to different words and to different actions. And the dark empath is able to manipulate you and control you and uh, push or pull on your emotions in order to get you to do things that the dark empath wants you to do. The dark empath is a person that uh, does not sympathize or emotionally feel guilt or negative emotion from what they do or how they impact you or your feelings. Your feelings are simply strings for them to pull to get you to do what they want you to do. The dark empath is a person that uh, has little interest in adjusting their opinions to your opinions. They have low openness, they have little curiosity for what you feel or what you think or what you want. The dark empath does not have the patience to listen to or hear out your thoughts or your perspectives or viewpoints. They will not change their minds just because you have presented them with new arguments or new thoughts. Now before we get into this video, let me invite you to my channel. Subscribe in the bottom below for notifications whenever other videos are live. Get content on psychology, personality types and personal growth. The dark empath is also a person who scores low on agreeableness. That means the dark empath has little sympathy for your perspectives or viewpoints. The dark empath does not care for why you feel a certain way or why you think about things a certain way or what perspectives or experiences or traumas you have. The dark empath does not need to or care to compromise or collaborate with you. The dark empath takes little interest in your success or well-being. It's just not important to them. They are too focused on their own success and their own well-being. Finally, the dark empath has low conscientiousness. That means the dark empath has little regard for rules or law or order except when it's convenient for them. The dark empath will break the law or act in ways that we would consider immoral or unethical or even illegal in order if they think that they can get away with it. So. What can you do or how do you know if you're dealing with the dark empath? First, let's be real. Uh, sociopaths and psychopaths are very rare. There are lots of people in the world that are self-absorbed and can be egotistical and can be close-minded and can struggle to collaborate and can struggle to sympathize. In the heat of the moment, anyone can be mean or can be hurtful or can be aggressive or egotistical. It can happen even to the most, uh, the best of us that we can have bad days. We can have people we don't like. We can have people we struggle with. We can have people we don't understand. Some people are more difficult to understand than other people. We can also have had bad experiences that have caused us to act or do things in certain ways. We can become more close-minded because we are more scared or anxious. We can have uh, things in our life or baggage that is causing us to have trust issues and that can cause us to struggle to collaborate with other people. We can feel a higher need to protect ourselves. And let's be real, these things are not a sociopathy or it's not uh, the, the traits of a psychopath. Sure, one-on-one -on -one it can collaborate with or link to these traits but when you look at and understand these kind of people you have to understand this is a pathological person this is a person with uh, basically a, a cognitive disability 
not being able to relate to you, not being able to understand you, not being able to work together with you is a dysfunction. So we are talking about dysfunctional people there, people that just don't work the way we need to work in order to have healthy, lasting, long-term relationships. That means this kind of a person is going to struggle to have meaningful, genuine connections with other people. The dark empath feels completely estranged from others. They struggle to have any form of meaningful long-term relationships with other people because most of their relationships are based on lies and deceit. The pattern of these types is that uh, from a childhood level, we have to really start looking there. These people have been unable to have any form of genuine interactions with other people. It's been games from the start and games will follow them for the rest of their lives. You'll see if you start looking at a person's history that th this is a dark empath or this is a person who is in the dark triad. This is a person that uh, has some kind of sociopathy, narcissism or psychopathy. And honestly, only a psychologist can give you a qualified answer on a person. Still, there are things you can look at and there are things you can do in order to see whether you are dealing with a dark empath or not. And there are ways you can defend yourself against people that have these traits. The most interesting thing about the dark empath is that the dark empath does understand you. The dark empath does get how you work. They know what buttons to push, they know how to make you feel a certain way, they know how to get you to do certain things. They will uh, find ways to guilt trip you, they will find ways to manipulate you, they will find ways to use you and your emotions. That means they have a base understanding of how you are feeling. They are not just steamrollers that are just blindly throwing things out there hoping that something will work. They are deliberately pulling the strengths. So. This is, suggests that, yeah, they have some capacity to feel what you are feeling. And this is perhaps what makes them so dangerous. Because when you are with a dark empath, you can still feel understood. A dark empath can still make you feel comfortable. A dark empath can still make you feel good. Because they still know how to make you feel a certain way. And uh, that sense of recognition and uh, that sense of being understood can be also what brings you to a dark empath. People with a higher EQ, people with a higher ability to recognize emotions are more popular and can make themselves more popular with you if they need you for something. And that's uh, no matter for what intent, good or bad. When you're dealing with the dark empath, you have to recognize that this is a person that can be nice to you if it's in their benefit. That means, yeah, they can say nice things to you, they can compliment you, they can, uh, you can even have fun or you can even have positive experiences with them for the moment, at least for that specific moment. So you can feel a bit sometimes blindsided by that because he seemed so nice and he seemed so genuine and he seemed so friendly. <laughs> Often when talking about these people, everyone is surprised to realize uh, that it was all a facade. So people are surprised to hear that this person could potentially be manip malicious or manipulative. It's all there on the surface. On the surface they seem to be well-dressed, well-mannered, polite. They seem to, uh, you know, do and say all the right things. It's only when you start getting below, beneath the surface, that you start noticing that something is off. So when uh, you are with the dark empath, probably the best things you can do is just stay yourself. The first and foremost, most important thing you can do is just be yourself and uh, be honest and be vulnerable and be real. A lot of people today, they lack healthy boundaries. That means it's hard for people to communicate their own needs and what they want in order to be happy and healthy in a relationship. And if you struggle to set boundaries, you might be especially at risk of a dark empath. A lot of people uh, might find that they are too cooperative or too collaborative or that they are too eager to compromise. You'll go along with every whim of the other person. You'll be quick to agree because you don't want them to be angry. You don't want them to be upset. You don't want them to 
do certain things. So the fear of conflict can be a real issue if you are dealing with dark empaths. And if you, uh, the more open your boundaries are and the more loose and the more willing you are to compromise your own needs and values for other people, the more at risk you are of being manipulated or used. That means you have to have a sit down talk with yourself and remind yourself that you are the boss of your own life and you are the one that has to make the final decision and you are the one whose happiness must come first to yourself. That means you must make decisions that will make you happy and that will make you feel fulfilled. You must take advantage of, you must take care of your own needs first before you can take care of other people. You'll experience guilt, you'll experience shame, you'll experience anxiety, worrying about other people, uh, worrying with about what they will think about you, uh, you'll feel that you're not good enough for others, you'll feel that you're not uh, able to help people you would want to help, you'll feel that uh, you people around you deserve more support, that other people around you need more from you than what you can give. And you'll have all these feelings, but you have to first and foremost center yourself in yourself and in who you are and what you realistically can expect from yourself. Because there is a limit to what you can do and how much you can give at any given time. There is, there is a time when you have to recognize that you are enough just the way you are and where you have to give yourself the benefit of the doubt and the self-respect to say I'm enough and this is all I can give but this is good enough this is enough in itself what I'm doing here this uh, brief talk this brief chat is enough and people cannot expect or demand more than what I can give in a way that is healthy for myself and what will make me happy and what will make me feel comfortable. What can you do to recognize that you're dealing with the dark empath or that uh, somebody is manipulating you? First, uh, you look out for the three uh, signs I mentioned below before. Low openness, low agreeableness, and finally low conscientiousness. We'll start with low conscientiousness because that's probably the most difficult one that requires you to actually look at the other person. Is the other person consistent in their actions, words, and behaviors? Do they meet agreements that you make together, even when it's uncomfortable for them? If they have said to do something, will they follow through? The other part is openness. When you're dealing with another person, do they show a willingness to adjust to your thoughts and your perspectives? Will they consider and entertain your ideas? Will they hear you out? And will they pay interest in your life? Will they ask questions about how you're doing, what you're doing, and your interests? Will they pay an attention or energy into uh, listening to and participating in your hobbies and activities and the things that you like to do? And will they give your needs credit? Will they uh, give you the time to do what you want? Or will they force you to constantly give your time to them? Finally, let's talk about agreeableness, rather the lack of it. In conflicts, does this person show a willingness to compromise? Will they hear you out? Will they uh, let go of whatever is important to them in a moment to see if, if you can find some kind of common thread? Will they be prepared to uh, let you win a conflict or an argument sometimes if it's important to you? Can they set aside or agree to disagree on a matter? Can they collaborate with you even if you have differences in work ethic or approach or in uh, your initial goals for the project? Are they prepared to let you take the lead or the reins sometimes? Will they let you sometimes make decisions about goals and projects? Those are all important questions and if you find that this person is lacking on these dimensions you also can find if you're dealing with a dark empath and this brings us to the biggest point you know do they think that your emotions are strings to be pulled or do they think that your emotions are things worthy of respect when you are sad will they see and understand that i see that you're sad or that i upset you and i'm sorry 
will they, when they know that you are feeling a certain way, I see that you're anxious, or I see that this upset you, and I see that this happened, when they give you this understanding, will they also respect your feelings, or will they pull on it? Will they constantly pull on it? Why are you sad? Why are you upset? Why are you feeling this way? Will they make you second guess yourself and your feelings? Am I really feeling this? And do I have a right to feel this way? Or do I, should I be upset? And am I wrong or am I stupid for feeling this way? Notice if the other person is allowing you to, and <laughs> giving you uh, the space to have and form your own emotions, even if it's uncomfortable for them, or even if it's uh, in a conflict, or even if it's in a difficult situation. Anyways, those were my thoughts on the dark empath. Have you had any experiences with dark empaths? And what are your thoughts on this type? Share your thoughts in the comments down below and do subscribe for more content like this. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video.